in this lesson we're going to talk about something called a conic section. And a conic section is the cross section of a double cone and a plane. And these are the four that we study, the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. And so this red example is the cross section between the double cone and a plane that generates a circle. So the circle is not a filled in circle, it's just the set of points that make up the, the perimeter of the circle, not the interior of the circle. And you see that this plane is, I guess you would say, parallel to this base of the cone. And then if I angle this plane slightly, I'm going to get my ellipse. And so the ellipse is the set of points where the cone intersects the plane, so it's not the disk, but the, but the outer part of the ellipse. Now a parabola is also generated by this cross-section of a plane and a cone, and this plane here that makes the parabola is actually parallel to this line here. And uh, the parabola itself is, is the set of points. It's not the interior part, it's just the part where the cone hits the plane. And this is how you get a hyperbola. You get a plane that hits one part of the cone, the upper part of the cone, and hits the other part of the cone. So this is actually one graph because the plane hits the cone twice. Now these cones are infinite, they go on forever. And they're actually generated by taking a single line and just rotating it to get the double cone. And the thing to remember is that the conic that we're looking at is actually where the cone hits the plane. And we're actually looking at it in the plane, not 3D. So it's like you live on this little plane and what you see when the cone hits is just going to be that circle. And so if you live on this plane and it's angled this way with the cone, the only thing you're going to see is this ellipse. And if you live on this plane and it hits the cone, the only thing you're going to see is this parabola. And if you live on this plane, the green plane, uh, you're only going to see that part and that part go on forever. Now, there are cases that are degenerate cases, meaning they don't form one of those four. And we don't study these because they're totally trivial and uninteresting. So if you have a plane that hits that vertex where the two vertices of the cone uh, meet, you just get a point in the plane and, and whatever, that's no big deal. And if you get a plane that's cut at an angle that, as it says here, is tangent to the double cone surface, you just get a straight line. And if you just cut the cone completely in half like that, you actually just get two intersecting lines. Then here's another view of the conic sections that kind of help you figure out where how they're generated. So as I said, this line and that plane are parallel, then you get your parabola. If, if you have this height of your cone and you have the plane perpendicular to that height, you're going to get a circle. If the plane is not perpendicular to that height, you get the ellipse. And then you get hyperbolas by just hitting the plane, uh, hitting the cone that way. Now we're going to start with the easiest of the conics, the circles. And this should be review because I know Mr. Word goes over circles in geometry and circles in a plane, which is basically what this is. So the circle, by definition, is a set of all points in a plane that are a fixed distance or radius from a fixed point called the center. So we have the circle, which is the set of blue points, the radius, which is that red uh, length right there, and that green point is the center. And we use this definition to find the equation of a circle. Um, and so if I want to derive the formula, I get any point P, X, Y, it's on the circle if, if and only if the distance between P and the center C is always R. And we're going to use the distance formula to derive the formula of a circle. So now on to the tiny amount of work that is required to derive the equation for a circle by its definition. So point on the circle xy, center of the circle hk, radius r. I'm looking for the distance pc to always equal r. So I use the distance formula and I plug in for x and y and I get x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r. And I square root both sides and I get the equation for a circle. So that's where the circle formula comes from. Here it is, x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared, where x, y is any point on the circle. 
and hk is that center, and of course r is that radius. Now let's do some examples of working with circles in a plane. So first, let's find the equation of a circle with the center negative 3, 4, and radius 8. This is a super basic level example, and uh, just sort of a, hey, do you remember the formula kind of example. I have the center negative 3, 4, and a radius 8, and so plug it, plugging those numbers into my formula, I get x plus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 4 quantity squared equals 64. And on to the second basic level example of circles. I give you the equation. Now I need to find the center and the radius. So the center is 8, negative 9. The only tricky part is making sure you get the sign right on the y-coordinate. And then I have to square root 144 to get my radius of 12. Example 3 is not so basic. Um, I give you the generic equation for a conic, and when I say a generic equation, I mean the parentheses are gone, it's been simplified, and every single conic can be written this way, and when they're written this way, you have to determine what kind of conic they are, and in this case, it's a circle, because we're talking about circles, and so let's uh, go to the document camera and figure out how to find the center and radius given this kind of equation. So I have this simplified version of a conic, meaning it's been all multiplied out, and it's a circle. And the reason why I know it's a circle, and later on when you see the other versions of the conics all multiplied out, the telltale sign of it being a circle are that the coefficients of the x squared and the y squared are identical. If it were a parabola, an ellipse, or a hyperbola, that would not be the case. And if I want to find the center and the radius, I have to put it into this format, which is the x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared form, which means I need to do a double completing the square. I need to complete the square with the x, and I need to complete the square with the y. So I have x squared minus 6x, and then y squared minus 8y equals negative 13. I just rearranged everything to prepare for my double completion of the square. So then negative 6 divided by 2 is 3, and squared that is 9. Now you have to remember to add 9 to both sides, or it's no longer equal. And then the same thing, negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4, squared is a positive 16. You have to add 16 to both sides. And so then I can factor this to x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared, and then I have to add thir negative 13 plus 9 plus 16, which gives me 12. And so my radius is the square root of 12, which is 2 root 3, and my center is located at 3, 4. Now this next example I'm giving you because it's a special case. And so let's go to the document camera and see why. Now we're gonna do the special case example. Same thing happens as I did with the last example. I have to complete the square twice. So I'm going to rearrange my terms and leave some space so I can complete the square twice. And I have to have negative 10, which is negative 5, and square it, which is 25, which I must add to both sides. And then half of 6 is 3 squared is 9, so I have to add 9 to both sides. And I can go ahead and write this in factored form. And something special happens here. I get negative 10. And the radius is a distance, and distances cannot be negative. So what I gave you to begin with was never a circle. So this is actually not a circle. The equation doesn't work. And that's why this is a special case.
And finally, let's do something uh, slightly fancier. It's not that difficult in the whole scheme of conics, as you will see when you have to look at hyperbolas and ellipses. But it's an example that you really kind of need to draw a picture for. So let's see how this one works. Now for that last example, the one where you have to think a little bit, it's best to draw a picture. So I know I have a radius of 4, a center in the first quadrant, and I know the circle's tangent at 0, 2. So there's a point of tangency here. And I have some circle in, who centers in the first quadrant. And I need to remember some things about radii, circles, and tangencies. I know from geometry that the radius from a point of tangency to the center is perpendicular. So since the tangent line is a vertical line, that means I can draw a radius that's just a horizontal line. I know that's a radius and I know it's equal to four. And I need to know the center of a circle to write the equation of a circle. And so I can figure out this very easily because I know that my y value is 2, and now my x value is 4. So that's my center of my circle. And I have my radius, so I can write my equation. It's x minus 4 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. Okay, so you actually have to remember some stuff from geometry and some features of the circle and radius to answer this question.